Hi, welcome to Three Questions With. Got my buddy John with us from LGA. Hey, John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. So, John, I asked you to come on the show today because I want to talk about what's going on. Now, in the audit and financial advice firm, you know, I'm finding people have to make some really, really big decisions. And I feel like they're flipping a coin. You know, I saw someone last night, small business owner, um, just shut her door. She's like, look, you know, it's not going to turn around. It's not going to get better. I'm, I'm done. That may have been the right decision for a business, but it may not have been. So that's why I think someone like you could come in and go, John, let's talk about this. This is what I'm considering doing. What's your years of experience in the firm's experience? Do you think I'm making the right decision? Is that a good idea? No, absolutely, Kevin. It's unfortunate because, you know, small business owners typically lack the infrastructure and support that larger businesses have. And so that's really where the relationship with the CPA becomes even more, um, more critical because those conversations have to be occurring with someone. Nobody wants to make decisions in a vacuum, um, but you also have to have the, the knowledge. Typically, small business owners are very knowledgeable about what they do, the service they provide or the product that they sell but they're not necessarily as worldly when it comes to all facets of the business. And so you always want to see small business owners work with a trusted advisor. And what happens often, unfortunately, Kevin, is that when things are going good, nobody really thinks much about their advisor. As long as they're getting their tax returns or their financial statements, they don't really spend a lot of time talking to the advisor. But if they had that relationship, uh, there should have been a lot of conversations that were occurring along the way so that no one's put in a position just by you know one event that completely cripples the business without enough knowledge because there should have been some risk management along the way as well. Yeah. So John, to me, it's important now as we all think about pivoting, whether that's maybe you know using less office space, maybe more remote workers, outsourcing more, is to sit down and go, okay, John, this is what I'm considering. Now, what are the risk? Because everything changes. As we were talking before this show, a lot of, of what we do is God. You know, you're sitting down with a client, you get to know them as a person, maybe know what their risks are, you know, and hey, what type of chances, risk can they take? But also making sure that, you know, sometimes we're just naive. You know, we just, oh, it'd be fine. And then something happens, like, oh my God, I didn't realize I was taking this risk by, you know, outsourcing this or letting someone work from home. So you can kind of help people make that pivot if they need to do it. Yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to modeling and understanding the business. And I think even more important, too, is sometimes the business owner understanding themselves. You know, people succeed for different reasons. Sometimes it's just because of the nature of who the owner is themselves. Sometimes it's because they are able to capitalize on an opportunity in the market. But as those as the market changes and those opportunities start to go away, I think, you know, you use the word pivot, which I think is going to be the word of 2020. Their ability to pivot obviously depends on who the business owner is themselves and whether or not they have that intellectual ability to shift and, and, and think of things from a different perspective. But at the end of the day, if you don't understand a model and there's no sensitivity analysis around how uh, downturns are going to actually economically impact you, how it's going to impact your cash flow models and what you're going to do different to respond to that, you're sort of, you're sort of shooting blindly. And that's, that's part of the problem with the, that a lot of business owners are facing right now is that they really weren't prepared for this. And what you really want to do is have a business model that is sound. And so that the minute something happens, you know, you can pull a few levers because you've already sort of created a model that allows you to flex it to what's going on around you. I think that's the key. Like you said, you know, I find a lot of people now are scared. You know, we've had a couple months where revenue has been really low for some of my clients to the point of non-existent. And now they're looking at it saying, okay, I need to cut expenses. You know, it's like, okay, I understand that, but we still got to make sure that we're covered. You know, don't go try and cancel your insurance or something that, you know, that's going to have a big impact on you. So that's where you guys could come in to help people say, okay, you know, um, one of the other things I find is people keep offering new services, you know, and not to make it business one-on-one, but, you know, I'm like, but John, what's your opportunity cost? There's only so many hours in the day. If you start doing that instead of this, you know, does it make sense? And a lot of times they just don't consider the cost involved. You know, it's like, yeah, okay, I see you see the revenue, but what's going to be the cost to get to that revenue? That's yeah. where you guys kind of come in and, and walk them through that to make sure they're not thinking, hey, I'm making all this money, but they're not because of the extra cost. 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple things that you hit on there. And one is this concept of playing defense versus offense. When you talk about cutting expenses in response to what's going on, you're playing a game of defense at that point. And I'm not saying that there isn't cost reduction that has to occur. But if the only way that you're going to manage an economic downturn is to reduce expenses and not to use that word again, pivot and try to figure out how you're going to drive the revenue back up, either through exploring some alternative revenue sources or changing the way you go to market, then eventually you're going to shrink yourself down to where you might not be able to recover from it. So I think that's one thing that people have to realize is you always want to be on the offense. And that does require a game plan, which is, which can be a challenge, but absolutely. You can't just start throwing spaghetti at the wall and just all of a sudden attack something because you think it's going to uh, be an opportunity. If in the fact during the process, you actually kill the other business. So um, you really, this is again, you, this is where you need a team. You need somebody that you can actually talk to and bounce these ideas off of. Uh, because typically, again, your your advisor is going to understand you, the market. They're actually even going to have other clients that might be in the exact same situation. So they can sort of bring all that knowledge to bear and really sort of help you steer down that path in, in a safe way rather than a haphazard way. I think that's nicely said. So, John, how can people reach out to you if they need help? You can reach me directly. Uh, my email address is jgeraci at lgallp.com. So that's J-G-E-R-A-C-I at L-G-A-L-L-P dot com. Uh, I'm the managing partner here at LJ. We have a full team of advisors. We have the tax and, and financial statements like most CPA firms, but we also have a business advisory group who's extremely busy right now helping businesses through this pandemic and figure out how their business model needs to change moving forward. John, I appreciate you taking a few minutes to jump on the show with me. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thanks, Kevin. Good to see you.